Three points that I will be talking about in this video. Number one, my take on the September deliveries and sales numbers in Q3. Second of all, I will be talking about valuations and how they are comparing between EV players in China. And third, stick till the very end to also get a little bit of an outlook and where I think things will be going. Now let's jump first in the news release here. Neo provides a September and third quarter delivery update. So they've delivered 15,641 vehicles in September 2020. That's an increase of 43.8% year over year and on a quarterly basis that's actually even a 75% um, year over year increase compared to the Q3 last year and cumulative we're getting close to the 400k uh, milestone here so that's quite impressive and if you've watched my previous videos about the uh, earnings calls and so on you will know that NIO has guided to deliver more than 55,000 cars in this quarter so they are slightly above that their guidance was actually a range between 55k and 57k so you can see it's at the lower end of the guidance but it's certainly within the guidance and so I think some investors were hoping for a smashing of that guidance and a beat based on strong September numbers that clearly wasn't the case so let's have a little bit more of a look what's going on first of all i always do this kind of um, business work days adjusted um, production rates here so over time i'm tracking uh, what are the business work days for each of these months and then also uh, what has been the deliveries divided by that actually on a monthly basis and as you can see in September uh, we had three days left and therefore also the daily uh, deliveries are actually down compared to the August number here which had three more business days while deliveries and production can certainly go on during um, non-business days still this metric can be a proxy for adjusting for some of the down days due to holidays or some slower movements of cars during that time and then if we look at the long-term trend we can see clearly where NEO has been falling off a cliff from start of this year when the main transition from NT 1.0 to 2.0 uh, was taking place and now has picked up with a lot of steam but now has come back a little bit more to this linear trend line here as you can see fluctuations on a monthly basis can happen that's why quarterly data should give us more sense of what's actually happening and if you're looking at this chart um, you can see that there's quite a bit happening and this was the highest quarter ever for NEO and it's a huge bounce and run up from the previous lows in Q2 right now if we compare this quarterly data between EV players it's getting quite interesting and by the way I would love to include BYD and Li Auto however I don't have any data for their pure EV sales so Li Auto is currently not selling any pure battery electric vehicles and for BYD they don't disclose the numbers separately for um, EVs only in comparison to those three players here and what we can see uh, should actually be quite exciting for investors for vehicle sales NIO is up 136 percent between Q2 and Q3 um, their average sales prices have been quite low in Q2 that's much lower than what NIO has been selling on average in the past but uh, due to some factors like they had to get rid of um, old models at discount and also opening the possibility for buyers to buy the car without having battery swap for a lifetime um, that was dropping the average sales prices here for NIO and we'll see uh, for Q3 I've now just assumed it's going to be the same average sales price I think it's more likely that it's going to be higher than that actually but in the last quarter just the car sales for NEO brought in roughly 1 billion uh, in revenues and this quarter Q3 it should be more than double of that so more than 2.3 um, billion could actually be up even more depending if the average sales prices are going up and of course in the last quarter the margins were very low at only six percent they have guided to double digit margins so here I've assumed um, the lowest double digit margin that one can have 10% and then last quarter between selling the car the revenues that you get in and producing the car NEO got 61 million that are contributing to pay off the rest of uh, their spendings of, of course the spendings are currently much much higher so still the net losses have been quite high um, but um, now we can see that with the improved margins and improved revenues as well as possibly improved average sales prices uh, we should get um, possibly around 230 million of contribution margin here in Q3 and that is a staggering growth of 280 percent 
of this metric. Now let's see how this compares to some of the other players like Xpong. Vehicle sales in Q2 have been 23,000, in Q4 40,000. Um, that's an increase of 72%. And again, I'm doing the same thing as for NEO, 26,000 um, USD is their average sales price. By the way, I should have put the K USD here. Sorry about that. Um, and I'm keeping that for Q3. Um, so the top line revenues have been 600 million in Q2, will be about 1 billion in Q3. So also an improvement here uh, for Xpeng using the same ASPs here. Of course, that's a similar growth of 72% for the vehicle sales as well as for the top line. And the margin for the sales of Xiaopeng have actually been negative in the last quarter. So that means for each car that they have sold, they got less revenue than it actually cost them to produce it. So in total, they lost more than 50 million actually for for all of the cars that have sold while NIO was actually making 60 million for each of the cars that have sold. And so if we consider that um, this margin may actually improve a little bit, I'm not following the company too closely, but let's assume that's the general trend right now that the margins are getting better again. That might be a negative uh, vehicle margin of 5%, maybe even 0% or 1%, who knows, but actually that's still leaving them with um, you know, a negative result even for each of the cars they're selling. So I don't know if anybody out there thinks it's good business to sell a product um, below the cost of production. Um, I would say it's interesting to see that investors, um, which clearly have favored um, Xiaopeng's stock here, um, you know, more attracted by the 70% um, top line growth here than the 136% top line growth by NEO, as well as the positive contribution margin uh, by NEO of 280% also increasing, which by the way, it's increasing by 280% versus um, Xpeng's rather staying flat and actually being negative. Now, interestingly, we also can have a look at Tesla here. Um, by the way, these numbers are from Troy Tesla, um, a famous um, Tesla account on Twitter. So these are not my numbers. Um, and the vehicle sales in Q2 um, in domestic China have been 160k um, and will be down to maybe 150k ish in Q3. So the reason for that might be that Tesla is currently also uh, introducing the Model 3 Highland. So therefore there's um, not um, much growth currently if they have to um, bring up a new model. By the way, of course, um, you know, how many models has NEO um, upgraded from NT 1.0 to NT 2.0? You see every manufacturer is actually struggling with that. So that's a top line growth of minus 8% actually in Tesla's case. And the average sales prices are actually uh, by around 35, uh, 36,000 uh, USD. And that's based on uh, 5.7 billion in um, top line revenue reported by um, Tesla for China, which I picked up in CNEV post. Um, maybe this data is not entirely correct. Tesla is not very um, open and transparent about each of those uh, metrics uh, within China, but that's the data that I've gathered. And so we can see that NIO is uh, having the highest average sales prices, despite the fact that they are currently lower than they have been in the past. They have been well above um, 50,000 USD in the past. Uh, but anyways, I mentioned why this is down currently. So Tesla has a vehicle margin reported for global of around 18%. We don't really know um, how much is is it in China versus the rest of the world? It might actually be higher in China, who knows? Um, but um, in general, that leads of a, to a contribution. So the revenues that they get in minus the cost in order to produce them uh, will lead to around 1 billion that um, Tesla made in China in Q2. And now if we're looking, if we just get the same vehicle margin, uh, who knows if it's gonna be higher or lower. Um, arguably it might actually be even a little bit lower in Q3, who knows, but um, it's possible that um, this contribution margin therefore will be falling a little bit below 1 billion USD. And so overall we see that these metrics currently are negative for Tesla um, for Q2 compared to Q3. And also overall, um, NEO actually standing out here uh, with growth in these um, uh, sectors and uh, key metrics there. However, 
Of course, if we're looking at the stock performance, we can say that investors are currently uh, more confident to buy into Xpeng, which is losing money on each car they're selling, and Tesla, which is actually having uh, a decline on these metrics. However, it seems that investors are still not trusting the future of NEO's next month's and quarterly deliveries. And so it's very interesting to see that the market currently values Xpeng very much closely to NEO at around 13 billion US dollars. Um, by the way, for Tesla, it's of course an 800 billion market cap. If we take 50% only, um, because that's what 50% of production and and about the sales is coming from China. Um, let's say 400 billion of the market cap are based in China. Then investors are paying more for Xpeng uh, than for Neo, of course, and uh, obviously um, Tesla even more so. So where could we actually be heading in the next couple of months? Well, um, October will have very low working days because of Golden Week and so on. So um, only 19 business days. So naturally, if this metric and proxy is right, it should maybe um, you know mean that we are at a similar daily run rate uh, than September. Overall, that would mean maybe even lower deliveries than in September. Could be falling below 15K on a monthly basis. In my point of view, who knows? And then November um, will have those 22 and 21 in December business days again where we could actually also see um, maybe an increase again on the production side and so overall on this trend line this could you know come a little bounce here when it's uh, in terms of production and on a quarterly basis this could actually mean that we would land at a lower quarter than actually Q3 but I've thought about this and just looking at the chart you can see how this Q3 number was such a big outlier here um, that it feels a little bit more natural that we are landing slightly above 50k in my opinion for the whole quarter which would be little bit of odd here because um, in the last couple of years we always had Q4 at the biggest and the highest number in terms of um, deliveries higher than Q3 right but I think it would be a very big stretch to get up here to let's say 60k um, that number might be rather unrealistic and also it would be getting already quite exponential here in case we are going to that sort of a quarter I'm not sure if we are there yet to be honest so my personal expectation here is uh, landing slightly above 50k and that would give us a base case of 164,000 um, deliveries in this year and that's a 34% um, year over year growth for the entire year um, in a big transition year in which new eight models have been introduced. So, so still cranking out more than 30% year over year growth, um, I would say isn't that shabby, but of course um, the expectations have been much, much higher. Maybe there could be also in the end an optimal case of more towards my 180,000 uh, wish figure there, which is closer to 50% year over year growth. But again, that would mean a big stretch in the next couple of months. I'm not sure if those new sales initiatives will be also already kicking in and if production with all of those eight new models is already um, picking up that much of a steam now that we can aim for that. Um, I would take this as a positive surprise, but certainly after all what's happened this year and where Neo currently is, I wouldn't personally take that as a given. Still comparing Neo to some of the other metrics that we see out there, I thought this is a really nice bounce in Q3, um, both on the top line, um, on the profitability per vehicle sold metric. And if NEO can continue on this trajectory, meaning margins up, revenues up over time, then I'm certain the opportunity cost will swing into the favor of NEO against some of these competitors. Thanks for watching. See you in my next one.